What is going on you guys and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're gonna create this. I lost my can, I can't pay off the bills with the blessing. I show I relate to the red page. It's feeling like money is everything. Now for this effect, we're also going to use Affinity Photo in combination with Luma Fusion. Now this effect is also something that you might have seen in some travel videos and cinematic videos as well. So let me know in the comment section below if you want to see some of the same effects applied to some uh, cinematic travel videos in the future. Now without further ado, let's head over to the subscribe button, tap on that and give this video a like for the algorithm, that would be highly appreciated. And now let's head over to the iPad. Now once we get over to the iPad and over to LumaFusion, we're gonna go to the point in the video where we want the transition to start and stop. So in this case, that will be around here. Now once we get to the point where we want the transition to start and stop, we're gonna move over to the share button and we're gonna take a snapshot. Now once we take in the snapshot, we're gonna move over to Affinity Photo, we're gonna tap on the plus on the top right corner for then to tap on import from photos. Here we're gonna select the image we just took in LumaFusion. Now once the image is imported to LumaFusion, what I like to do is make a duplicate because we might need this later or in worst case if you mess up the uh, image, you can go back to the duplicate image right away instead of importing a new one. Now after we made the duplicate, we're gonna move over to layers which is here and we're gonna unselect the bottom layer so we only have one of the layers visible. Now once we've done that, we're gonna move over to the button right here which is the clone brush. We're gonna tap on this two times which will open up the menu and here we're gonna select in painting brush. This will allow us to remove subjects or objects within the image and it will also do some cloning so we don't have to think about that after removing the subjects or objects. Now you can also use the same settings as I use, I like to have the hardness on zero and the opacity and flow on 100% and I adjust the width and the size size of the brush as I go along and remove different things in the image. Now having the hardness on zero, uh, you can really fade out the edges a little bit more and it makes it a whole lot smoother. Now once you let go, it will automatically render and you can see now that we've removed most of the subject. Now in most cases you will have to do small adjustments and you can simply do this by uh, doing additional drawings over the parts that you want to remove. Now we're also gonna remove the shadow, so we're gonna go on and paint over the shadow as well. And the light which is coming in from a window here is also something that we want to apply as a, a different effect later on when the clip is starting, so we're gonna go on and remove this as good as we can. Now keep in mind, this is a very rough drawing, so it's it's not looking that great, but since the animation we're gonna create in LumaFusion will go fairly fast, most of the viewers will won't notice something like this. And with some proper color correction and some LUTs and some adjustments, uh, maybe add some blur or uh, something like that to the uh, photo itself, you can really sell in this effect and it will look a whole lot better as well. Now once you're happy with the image and you have removed everything that you want to remove, we're gonna go over to the export button, we're gonna tap on export, then share and save image. This will save it to your photos app and we can easily drag this into LumaFusion later on. Now once this is done, we're gonna move over to the layers window and we're gonna remove the top clip here which is selected. Once this is selected, we can enable the duplicate image which we duplicated earlier on and uh, we can start masking out on this. So for this one, we're gonna mask out the subject and we're also gonna mask out the shadow. So to mask this, we're gonna use a freehand. We're gonna move over to the masking selection here and then we're gonna tap on freehand and we're gonna start by drawing a line around the subject. The line doesn't have to be accurate because we can fix most of this later on. Now once you're done with the uh, masking selection, we're gonna move over to the refine button and we can draw around the subject to smoothen it up and remove some of those rough edges. Now once this is done, we're gonna move over to the output which is down here and we're gonna choose a new layer with mask. 
Now, once we have our subject with the transparent background, we can move over to layer effects and we can add an outer glow. This will help to smoothen out the rough edges around the subjects or objects, and you can choose any color you want. In this case, I'm gonna go with white. Now, once we selected the color we want, we're gonna go over to the export button, tap on export, and then we're gonna tap on share and save this as an image as well. Now, the next step is to mask out the shadow because we want this to come in as well since we removed it in the first image. Now, again, we're gonna choose freehand and we're gonna draw a mask around the shadow. Once the mask is complete, we're gonna tap on the refine button. Once we tapped on refine, we can move over to the edges of the shadows and we can just try to smoothen those out a little bit. But in worst case, uh, if it happens to look something like this, where your edges are a little bit too rough and you didn't mask away or remove most of the parts that you wanted to remove, we can move over to the erase tool and we can simply delete whatever uh, we don't want in the shadow or the subject, object, whatever you are drawing in your uh, photos for your video videos. Now once we're done with this, we can move over and add an outer glow as well to this just to sell the effect and smoothen out the rough edges. Once we apply the outer glow, we can move over to export this as well and save it to our Photos app. Now once we're done with the last image, we're gonna move over to LumaFusion and we can import the images to our timeline. Now keep in mind that you want to have the background as the bottom layer because you want the subjects and objects to be on top coming in as an animation. Now once we applied some of the images, we can move over to the background image and we can find out the position of where we want to animate it. So in this case, I'm gonna animate it from the top to bottom and I'm simply gonna create a few keyframes here by adding some small adjustments to the position Y. You can also copy the numbers which you see here on the screen to create an animation which looks like this. And as you can see, I'm also leaving some space here at the end because I want to have some room for the animation as well. Now, once you're happy with the animation of the background, we're gonna go over and import the last clip, which is the shadow clip. Now here you can trim them down as you want, depending on where you want the animation to come in. So in this case, I want the shadow and the subject to come in fairly late, right before the video clip starts, also to help sell the effect. Now, once everything is roughly trimmed on the timeline, I'm gonna go into edit on the subject and we're gonna keyframe the subject in from the right side. Now, once we're happy with that animation, we can move over to the shadow and do the same thing there. Now, in this case, I want the shadow to come in from the bottom. So I'm gonna place it on the bottom, then create a keyframe, and then we're gonna go to somewhat the middle and make another keyframe and adjust the position. Now, if you want to leave more room for the animation and the freeze frame effect to pop in, you can go over to the end of each layer here and you can simply stretch it out so it gets longer and doing this at the end uh, will not ruin the animation which you created in the beginning of the different layers. Now, once you're happy with the duration of the effect and you trimmed it out for as long as you want, you can take all the layers and place back to where the cut is. Now you'll have the effect coming in a little bit earlier and you will also have the effect lasting a little bit longer. Now for the shadow clip here you can also see that we have a rough line around it and this is because we added the outer glow and the masking uh, was all the way out to the edge of the image. Now there's an easy way to fix this and that is to go over to cropping and then simply crop in the image so you don't see the line anymore. Now once you've done that you're finished with the animation and you will have something that looks like this. I lost my can, I can't pay off the bills with the blessing I'm sure I relate to the red page It's feeling like money is everything
So there you have another awesome effect which you can add to your music videos. The concept of this is to teach you how you can implement these type of effects into your videos and it's not said that you have to make music videos to make these effects. So again let me know in the comment section below if you want to see uh, these type of effects made for with in a cinematic travel sequence or any other type of videos down in the comment section below next to the subscribe button which you can tap that would be a highly appreciate it as well. Check me out on Instagram if you want an early peek of what's coming to this channel. Now with that said, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Yeah, yeah, it's the thing. It's just everything I need, right? Not so fond of change. I'm too caught up in my way of thinking. I get by on me. No, I don't need nobody.